welcome to the crochet bakery everyone in this video we're going to do a melanie martinez inspired void bonnet you will need two balls of the same colored yarn a six millimeter hook a stitch marker scissors polyfill some chain for the jewelry and a button so you will be working this two stranded so that's why you need two balls of yarn so working with two strands of yarn, you will make a magic circle and I kind of try to do this a little slow to show you how to do it, but if it's not slow enough, I'll put some links down below for more clear tutorials on how to do a magic ring. And then you will do chain one or two, whichever one you want to do. I did two in this video, but the written pattern have one, but either way is fine. And then you want to do eight half double crochets inside the magic ring. So in that first stitch, that first half double crochet, you're going to want to put a stitch marker. Stitch markers are really helpful for this project, so I feel like this is a necessary step just to make sure you're keeping track of that first stitch at each row. And once you have eight, you're going to want to count to make sure you have eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then pull the magic ring tight to close that hole in the middle. For row two, you're going to do two half double crochets in that first stitch. So that's why you need a stitch marker to keep track of that first stitch. There's no turning, no joining, and no chaining. So you just do two half double crochets into that first stitch from the last row, from the previous row. And then move your stitch marker accordingly. So move that to the first half double crochet that you're making in this new row and then the rest of the pattern for this row row two is two half double crochets in each of the remaining stitches so we are increasing in this row and make sure you're picking up both strands of yarn because it's really easy to miss and it's really important that you pick up both And once you reach the end, you should have 16 stitches. Okay, to start row three, you're going to half double crochet in the stitch with the stitch marker. Just do one half double crochet in that first stitch and then move your stitch marker. And then you're going to do two half double crochets in the next stitch. So do two into the same stitch and in the remaining stitches you're going to repeat one half double crochet in the next stitch two half double crochets in the next stitch so go all the way around row three doing one half double crochet and then two half double crochets in the next stitch until the end of the round
and your last stitch should be two half double crochets in the same stitch so now you're on row four you're going to do one half double crochet in the first two stitches and move the stitch marker accordingly So after doing one half double crochet in the first two stitches, you will do two half double crochets in the next stitch. And then for the rest of the round, you're going to do one half double crochet in the next two stitches and two half double crochets in the next stitch. And you will repeat this until the end of the row. you'll end up with 32 stitches after this row. So for row five, you'll do one half double crochet in the first three stitches. And of course, move the stitch marker accordingly. And after doing one half double crochet in the first three stitches, you will do two half double crochets in that next stitch. And for the rest of this round, you will do one half double crochet in the next three stitches and then two half double crochets in that next stitch. You will repeat this all the way around and you'll have 40 stitches by the end of the row. I'll show you the pattern one more time for this row. It's one half double crochet in the first three and then two half double crochets in the next stitch and repeat all the way to the end. So just a tip for each row, you should always be ending in an increase. So two half double crochets in the stitch. Now we're at row six, you're going to do one half double crochet in the first four stitches and you're going to move that stitch marker to that first stitch of course. So one, two, three, and four. And then in the next stitch, you will do an increase. So do two half double crochets in the next stitch. So then you will repeat this pattern. One half double crochet in the next four stitches and then two half double crochets in the next stitch and you will repeat until the end of the row. By the end of this row, you should have 48 stitches. And now for row seven, you will do one half double crochet in the first five stitches. Move the stitch marker. So one, the next one, two, three, four, and five. And then in the next stitch, you will increase. So do two half double crochets in the same stitch. And you will repeat that pattern all the way around. One half double crochet in the next five stitches and two half double crochets in the next stitch. And repeat all the way around.
So after row 7, you'll have 56 stitches or it should measure about 6.75 to 7 inches across. And if it doesn't, add more rows of increase or take away some rows of increase. So now row 8 through 12, you're no longer increasing and you're just doing one half double crochet into each stitch. Move your stitch marker accordingly just to keep track of the first stitch of each row because it might get confusing and also a trick that I use to keep track of the rows I put another stitch marker in that first row so row 8 just to keep track of how many rows I've already done since it's pretty repetitive you're just doing half double crochet in each stitch for rows 8 through 12 So now at row 9, you're going to do the same thing as row 8, just one half double crochet all the way around, no increases, and move your stitch marker. And then for the next row, you'll do the same thing, half double crochets all the way around. And then you will be doing this for rows 10, 11, and 12, all the way around, no increase. And I'll show you what it looks like when you're done. This is what it's supposed to look like when you're done. It'll be about six inches from top to bottom, like 6.5 inches from top to bottom. If you need it to be longer, keep going because it just depends on your head measurement. So row 13, make sure your stitch marker is in the first stitch of the last row. Chain one, and then you're going to turn. And then you're going to do one half double crochet in each stitch until you reach the stitch marker. And do not half double crochet into the stitch marker. So this is my secret. I'm going to show you how to do a half double crochet that looks invisible i don't know how to explain it but you know how when you do half double crochet there's like a bar that shows when you're turning this will not have that bar there so you're going to, instead of going under the v you're going to do go under the bar that's under the v if you see what i'm doing right there that's the secret to not having that little bar all the way around so i'll show you again so you're gonna do regular half double crochet but instead of going under the V, you're going to go under the bar that's under the V. So just watch what I'm doing and copy that because that'll make it look more clean. And you're going to do that all the way around until you reach the end. But do not have to crochet in the stitch marker. And I'll show you again. So go under the bar under the V. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. If not, I have pictures on the PDF and you can look at the picture. So once you reach the end of row 13, you will not crochet in the stitch marker stitch. You'll chain one and turn, and then you will do one half double crochet in each stitch until you reach the stitch marker. And again, do not half double crochet into the stitch with the stitch marker. You're no longer crocheting in the round, you will just be turning. And follow that cohesive look trick that I just taught you throughout this whole process because it'll eliminate that line that you get from doing half double crochets. Okay, so for the next row until you reach row 18, you will be doing one half double crochet in each row until you reach the end. Once you're done, you should end with the next slit that's about three and a half inches. Row 18 should end on the right hand side when the opening is facing you. And now we're moving on to the next strap. So row one of the next strap is chain one and do not turn. You're going to single crochet up the sides of the next slit. I did about one single crochet per row that you're working up. But you can do as many as you need in order to work all the way up to the middle of the next slit. And it doesn't have to be too tight or anything. Um, 
just play around with it and see how many single crochets work for you once you get to the stitch with the stitch marker you just do one single crochet into that stitch and do the same thing going up the slit do single crochets until you reach the end and you should end on the left hand side when the bonnet opening is facing you because this is where Melanie had her strap so if you want it to be the same make sure you end this this single crochet thing on the left hand side when the opening is facing you now you will chain 22 plus 1 this will give you about a 9 inch neck strap if you need a longer like if you need a longer measurement for your neck make more chains just adjust it to the measurements that you would need Once you reach the end of your chain, you are going to half double crochet in the back bump of the second chain from the hook. So you see right here, there's the front of the chain, which has the V's, and then the back has little bumps. You're going to half double crochet into the bumps on the back, and that just gives it a more clean finish. Also, try to not make your stitches that tight because it will make your neck strap a little tighter than it should be. So this is what your neck strap will look like so far and then once you reach the end of the chain you will attach it to the bonnet. So you will attach it by using slip stitches and I'll show you real quick how I attach the strap. You will do a slip stitch right across to attach to the bonnet. So I don't know if you saw that, you just I just did a quick slip stitch and then it's attached. So to move up to the next row, you'll do another slip stitch to the next stitch on the bonnet. So slip stitch and that'll bring you up to the next row. So since we used a slip stitch to go up in height, we do not have to chain one. We just do one half double crochet in each stitch until we have three stitches left. Once you have three stitches left, you will chain one, skip one stitch, and then one half double crochet into the last two stitches. And this makes your buttonhole. Okay, then you are going to chain one and turn. So for row four, you will do one half double crochet in the first two stitches. And then, so one and two. This one's a little hard to get, but it's right there. Two, and then in that chain one space, you'll just half double crochet inside there. And then for the rest of the next strap, just do half double crochet in each stitch until you reach the end of the row. And then you're going to attach, this is the last row of your next strap. So you just attach to the bonnet with just one slip stitch to the corresponding half double crochet stitch on the bonnet. And your next strap should be about nine inches and I have 22 stitches for each row. This is what your bonnet will look like so far after you finish the next strap. Um, this is how I fastened off. You don't have to fasten off like this. There's other ways to do it. This is just a quick way of how I did it. But just make sure you are weaving in all of your ends. Maybe you can weave them in now. Maybe just save them till the end. But We've been all your ends, girls. And now to my favorite part, the horns. Okay, for this first part, you will chain 11 and slip to join. The chain should be about four inches long. 
And with the horns, I've learned that you really just have to play around with this part of the pattern to get the correct measurements for your horn, especially if you're using a different yarn. It's just a little difficult to get it perfect. Just play around with it. They're not that hard to make. Just play around with the tension, the weight of yarn, the hook size, even the number of chains you use. The horn should measure about like five inches tall and like an inch and a half at the base by the end of this. Okay, once you've joined your chain for rows one and two, you will chain one and do one half double crochet in each chain slash stitch. And then at the end, you will slip to join to the first stitch. So this is what it'll look like at the end of row one. Make sure you have 11 stitches and then you're going to slip into that first stitch to join the row or the round. And then same thing with row two, you will chain one and then you'll do one half double crochet in each stitch until the end of the round and then you'll slip to join. So make sure you have 11 at the end of row two and then slip to the first stitch to join. For rows three through nine, you will start by chaining one and then you will decrease by half double crocheting two together. To half double crochet together, you will yarn over, insert your hook to the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, do not complete, and then just insert your hook to the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook. And then you will half double crochet in each of the following stitches and then slip to join. You'll end up with five stitches after row nine. So you're just decreasing one each row. And I'll show you again how decreasing looks. So you yarn over, insert your hook to the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and you'll have four loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook. This might not be like the politically correct way to do a decrease with half double crochet, but it worked for this project, so that's what I used. And this is what your horn will look like at the end of row nine. You'll have a little gap at the top still, so you'll use slip stitches to close that gap. So you'll do a few slip stitches across just to close that up and tighten it a little bit. Once you've completed your horn and slip stitched across the top, you're going to want to fasten off. And the way I did it was chaining one and tightening it and then cutting the yarn. But you can fasten off however you want. I also, once I cut it, 
I get the yarn, the extra yarn and I just pull it through to the inside. So instead of having to like weave in the ends, you can just add it to the stuffing. And then once you fasten off and put your yarn in, there is your completed horn and make this part again so you have two horns and make sure you use the same tension because I clearly didn't and these horns were a little bit different sizes so make sure you're using the same tension it's really important and once you have both horns you're gonna get your polyfill and you're gonna want to stuff these kind of a decent amount I didn't make them too stiff because I wanted to have them a little bit flexible to move however I wanted them to move but yeah just stuff them however you please. And then do the same thing with the second horn and then you're done. You're also going to want to fold over the bottom, the base of the horns, just to make it easier to sew on. Next step is attaching the horns to the bonnet. I put mine about two and a half inches from the brim of the bonnet around my temple area, but you can honestly put them wherever you feel like they'll look best for you. So you can use any type of stitch that you feel comfortable with or that you know to attach the horns onto the bonnet. You can also just try to follow along to what I did in the video. It's kind of hard to put into words but hopefully you can tell what I'm doing. If not, look up whip stitch on YouTube and I'll link some videos down below too and that should help you connect your horns to the bonnet. And you can kind of see how it's helpful to fold the first row of the horn kind of up on the inside of the horn so it's easier to sew. So really you're just sewing using row two if that makes sense. Also make sure you're pulling the working yarn a little bit tight so there's no gaps in between your stitches but not too tight where there'll be indents where you did your stitches. And here's a close-up of what I'm doing and how I used the whip stitch to sew. I'm pretty sure it's a whip stitch. If it's not, please don't come for me because I don't know. I'm more of a crocheter than a sewer, so please don't come for me. But yeah, just hopefully you can see what I'm doing and you can replicate it. Once you're done sewing, go around and make sure all your stitches are secure and there's no gaps. If there are, go around and make more stitches. And then once your ends are on the inside of the bonnet, you want to loosely tie the ends together. And I emphasize loosely because I made the mistake of making a super tight knot the first time I put the first horn. 
and I ended up needing to move the placement of the horns because I didn't like the way it looked so loosely tie until you're for sure about the placement and then make a tight knot and weave in your ends. And now you can finally attach the second horn on that other side. I forgot to film sewing the button on, but all I did was use a tiny crochet hook to weave the yarn into the holes and make a knot on the back. Um, I just did that twice and the darning needle didn't fit in the hole, so I just used a small crochet hook. And you're going to want to attach the button to the opposite side of the next slit, so opposite of the next strap. And now the final step of this tutorial is the chain. So I just use regular jewelry chain and I cut off eight inches of it. You can customize however much you want to use. And then I just looped it in and out of the horn as you can tell in the stitches. I did it three times, but you really can do it however many times you want. This is just how Melanie had hers. And there you have it. This is the completed void bonnet. Finally have the video out. There's also a free written pattern and I'll link that down below. Thanks for watching. Like if you like this video, subscribe because there is more to come. And also tag me on Instagram if you make this because I would love to see it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.